This is an in-depth overview of Shot Tracer Pro for macOS. First thing you want to do is create a export video folder. Um, you may call it export video or you know, the folder where your videos will be saved after they have been traced. Now open up Shot Tracer Pro uh, and select the video you want to work with. In our instance, we're actually going to increase the size of the screen so you can better see what's going on. Let's see. Let's import a video. Mm, we can start with, yeah, let's start with this one here, right here. Uh, or uh, this, one's, this one looks good. We can use any video type. We can use landscape, we can use portrait, 4K, anything you want. Um, one thing you'll notice is once you have selected a video, a thumbnail, a little thumbnail of it will appear on the left hand side and a progress bar. The progress bar just shows you that it's tracking. And here it is. This is the resulting traced video. It's instantaneous. So um, I can now uh, select my export folder. That's the one that I've recently created right here. And I can press export um, to save it to that folder. Now I can also, for example, change the color of the line. I can change the thickness. I can activate fade in, fade out at the beginning, at the end. Um, let's see here. So it's a solid line at the beginning, at the end. Um, yeah, I have all those different options, but for this particular video, let's just export it the way it is, the way it has been traced. Exporting again takes just a few seconds, and once it is exported, the folder with the exported video will show up, and it's ready to be played back. So right here, we have the trace shot tracer. Um, very simple, worked great, I'm really happy with the result. Now, if I wanted to use, for example, a, uh, oh, before I continue, if you wanted to change the landing spot in this, in this, in this um, traced video right here, just click on the end of the tracer line and drag using the keypad and pressing down on the keypad or your mouse, just drag it to the location where you would rather <laughs> or where you want the ball or the line to end. Um, yeah, I was really happy with the original tracer, so I didn't have to change anything. Let's try, let's try another video right here. This is a portrait orientation video. So again, you see the thumbnail here. You see that the impact frame, that's the moment the shot is being hit, has been selected correctly. So you know it's tracking at the right time of the video. And again, we have a perfectly traced video right here. And all I need to do right now is well, let's change the color. Um, let's make uh, fade out at the beginning and fade out at the um, at the end. So here you can see how it's perfectly traced. Hit it next to the pin. That's where it shows it um, also going. So now I just press again, save and trace the video. And the video um, is now being traced and again saved to the same exact folder I've previously selected that export folder. So all videos are being are being saved um, to that particular folder. Here we go. So now I can preview that traced video. Let me fast forward a little bit because it takes a little bit time to for me to hit the ball once I'm standing over it. Here we go. Excellent. Love it. Right, super super easy. So now let's get into um, one of the parts that might be a little bit more complicated. So let me tell you a little bit about what happens if, for example, you have a video where, there, where you hit a, um, multiple shots. Like you have this particular video right here and there were, it's, a, it's a group of four people um, and you have four different golf shots. So you select that video with those four different golf shots and off the bat, uh, you can notice that there's only th three thumbnails. That means that one of the shots is missing. If this happens, what do you do? Well, you press Add Shot. And Add Shot allows you to manually select the impact frame of the shot that is missing. So actually, my shot is missing in that video because one of the, of the four in this group was me who was hitting into that path three. So I manually use that scroller right here to set the impact frame. Let's see here, it doesn't need to be exact. It needs to be, um, can be a few frames after or before. 
I'm happy with this right here. I accept that impact frame. And as you can see, the fourth thumbnail, the fourth shot has been added to um, the, the, the storyboard here on the left hand side. And now my shot is traced as well. So I have one, two, three perfectly traced shots. Two of them were automatically traced. The third one I had to manually select the impact frame, but the fourth one hasn't been traced for some reason. Hmm. This could have been many, many different feet, uh, problems. The camera might have moved, um, could be anything, but it might happen. It might happen that a video is not traced. So what do we do? Well, for this case, we have manual mode. Manual mode is activated by simply pressing that, um, that tooth wheel just left of the X button in that particular thumbnail of the video that has not been traced. And you can tell because it's the grayed out thumbnail. Um, once I open the editor, I, I can actually zoom in so to make it full screen right here. And the first step is the app asks me to select the impact frame. So here I have the impact frame. I like to select one frame before actually the, the ball is hit um, to mark actually the, 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 the resting place of the ball. So let's do that. Let's mark one frame before the ball is hit and press set impact frame. Now I need to take the mouse right here and hover over the, um, the golf ball while clicking on the trackpad and release. And now I've marked my first location of the in the first frame of the golf ball. In order to, mag, uh, to mark the next and the consecutively next frames after this, I can either press the space bar or I can press the button on the screen called next frame. Um, and then I press again the location of the golf ball in the next frame. Now I continue. Now I want to go to the next frame. I press the space bar because it's easier. I select the location of the golf ball and so on. I press the space bar once I've selected the location of the golf ball and then again I use the cursor to curse to the next location of the golf ball in the next frame and I continue doing this. I can do this actually for quite a while because the ball is in this instant for example clearly visible. There is a minimum actually of you need to at least have four frames marked in order to continue in terms of selecting the next step, which is the landing spot. So the minimum is uh, four frames, but there's no maximum in terms of how many frames you can select the golf ball in. And it takes literally a few seconds to go nearly through the entire flight of the golf ball because the layout of this system is super simple and super quick to use. And well, here we go. I've selected, let's say maybe 20, 30 frames. And now I'm good to go. I wanna go to the next step and select the landing frame. But do remember, the more frames you select, the better of a projected line is traced. Now I wanna select the landing spot. So I uh, press the button continue and select landing spot. And I know the ball landed just right of the pin. So I position the cursor here, just right of the pin and now I'm ready to create the line. So I press create the line. Here we go. The line has been created. Um, now I can obviously move it left and right. If I wanted to say, okay, maybe it did land left of the pin or right of the pin, I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to move the line around. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, there's this feature called locked peak or lock peak in this instance. And here what it does is it locks the peak so when you have a very well traced um, trajectory of a ball flight and, some, and, and, and you want to adjust the landing spot just a little bit left or right, that means just a few pixels left or right, you want to make sure that you lock the landing spot so the whole line is not shifted left and right because um, if the whole line shifts on a well tracked ball flight then the exported video you will see the, the, the ball flying um, in one direction the line maybe being a little bit of the actual ball flight. So um, if you are using manual mode on the other hand, then you can certainly unche un uncheck lock peak so that the peak does move proportional to the landing spot because you might be um, changing the landing spot more severely than you were. You would be with a well automatically traced um, resulting bulb trajectory. So I'm happy with this and now I have all the four shots. 
uh, traced as you can see and I can again change the color of the line I can um, basically uh, change the width um, or the thickness of the line let's make it a little bit thinner I'll go with 50 and I'm ready to export and here comes another um, key to understand about this app if you want to export videos and you have for example four shots in one video you have two options to export those videos you can either export them as one single file that means the whole entire video as in its original format and size and length is exported with each individual shot um, basically traced in that video or you can decide that you want to export each individual shot as each individual video so you have four shots you will be exporting four individual videos um, what are the benefits of of each of them well it really depends what you want to create for example if you want to overlay all the four shots into one video so you have like an overlay of all those four trajectories in one video file then you want to make sure that um, that you're exporting as single video and you mark the line visibility really, really high. What does line visibility mean? That means how many seconds does it take for the line to basically fade out of view um, after the, ball, the line, basically the ball has landed on the ground. So if you set it, for example, to two seconds, after two seconds, the line will disappear after it has landed. If you set it to 600, that means 600 seconds, it takes the line 600 seconds to disappear after it has landed which is great if you have, for example, four shots in that video. This will in, in turn create a video with four lines that have been permanently um, placed on that one particular video file. In this instance, I'm just gonna export um, four different videos. So each line, um, each tracer and each player gets their own video file. So I, again, I have previously selected the export folder. I'll keep it the same. And now I uh, press trace and export and that's it. I'm now exporting each video individually and depending on what kind of resolution you're using, if you're using 4K, it might take a few seconds longer. But here in this instance, we're using 1080p. And as you can see, it's really, really fast. We're nearly done with exporting all those four videos. Um, yeah, let's just give it a few more seconds. Now it's, I can tell it's exporting the last video right now. And here we go. Once the video is exported, the pop-up shows up right here again, and I can preview those videos. So that's the first shot, the second shot, the third shot, and the fourth shot. So this is in-depth preview of Shot Tracer Pro for Mac OS. We are obviously going to expand this, um, this app significantly. So we're going to add distance, we're gonna add live scoring, we're gonna, you might be even familiar with our um, iOS version. Um, it has a lot of, it has actually a ton of features. So just be prepared to see um, these features and even more awesome features also in the Mac OS version. But it's gonna take a few, a few weeks um, to really um, get get those features um, in there so, so just stay patient and make sure you check for updates regularly because we're gonna try to definitely at least once every two weeks or every week um, add new feature new features just as we did with the iOS version uh, if you have any features that you would like to see in this app uh, please feel free to um, send us an email uh, and also, if you have any issues with this um, app, also please send us an email. Our support staff is here to help. We will be um, gladly assisting you with any needs you might have. So, I hope you enjoy Shot Tracer Pro, and we look forward to growing this wonderful software alongside with your help. Thank you so much.